Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Lalina Lala Duncan. She's a highly sought after women's strength and longevity coach and all in on helping her clients prioritize their health and happiness. Not only do I admire Lala for her work, we happen to work together to help optimize her health. So in this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm going to interview Lala on her coaching style and her experience, as well as what it's like to work with me. So you guys can get a little sense of what working with me is all about. So let's introduce you to Lala Duncan. Hey, Health Junkies. I am Lalena, otherwise known as Lala Duncan, on today, and she is a strength and longevity coach. I love that title, and we're going to be getting into what that means and how looking at strength and fitness as you get older evolves a little bit, but how we can embrace it and really get the results that we want as we get older. So, Lala, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you. I'm super excited to be on, Janine. Man, I've been thinking about this podcast for a while because I was like, there's so many things I want to talk about and so many things I want people, you know, to hear. And and one of the things that really, you know, struck me about you, especially like the first thing that jumps out on me on your Instagram is the strength and longevity coach. Will you tell us a little bit about what that means to you and how you're working with clients in that department? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so it's something that just kind of naturally evolved for me as well, a lot to do with my own personal journey with my own fitness, because I, long story short, like I didn't even start, I had never even (laughs) picked up weights until like I was 37 years old. So I kind of started strength training a little bit later in life. And then I kind of fell into more strength sports. So I started out from going from doing nothing like yoga and spinning classes (laughs) to joining a strongman gym and then trying to compete in strong woman competition. So I kind of went from like one extreme to the other. Um, so then kind of from there, I got into CrossFit, kind of the same thing. Um, just, you know, again, going into more competitive strength sports arena. And then once I moved back to the U S I started doing personal training and I started realizing that kind of like the way I was used to training myself wasn't really applicable to the people that I was training. Um, I started training primarily middle-aged men when I got to New York Um, and then, you know, middle-aged women started to follow and that was more of my demographic. And I started to notice that, that we were all kind of searching for the same thing which was, of course, obviously, everyone wanted to look good, but more or less, we all just wanted to feel our best. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of just how it it started for me, I, I had to evolve from more of like the sports being an athlete type of mentality, when it came to training, to kind of like, how can I sustain this and keep doing it? forever. Like if you're not training for a competition, then what are you training for? And so, I mean, for me and everyone else I train, we're, we're training for life, you know? So. I I love the concept of training for life. Cause I think a lot of people, when we think of training, you know, unfortunately, as it is in the the U S in particular, it's like, I need to lose weight. I need to get ready for this. I need to get ready for that. But it's like, wait, wait, there's always a short term goal. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's like, what about life? What about like, you know, I always talk to folks and I'm guessing you're probably in the same camp here. Like, I don't want to be in a nursing home ever. Like, I don't want yeah. assisted living and I want to be able to get off the toilet, you know, at any given time. By yourself. Yes. <laughs> hands down, hands down and yeah. public bathrooms. I want to be able to hover if I need to. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's important. <laughs> Incredibly. Absolutely. Incredibly. So I'm guessing that a lot of your folks are kind of thinking through that. And and one of the things that, you know, you had mentioned you were training like middle-aged men and then switched to women. What's the, what do you find is different between mentalities, between men and women when it comes to fitness and, and like the little intricacies? So 
that's interesting. <laughs> um, the way I would train them as far as exercise selection and programming and things like that, I always geared everyone towards strength training. It, the difference is obviously the, you know, how you break through to certain clients and try, I would say with women, the hardest thing is, is the buy-in, mm -hmm. you know, with men, it's a little bit different. The buy-in is different with my male clients. Cause I was training men that were type a professional, very successful middle age, getting them to warm up <laughs> before loading the bar would say like 225 for bench press. That was the hardest thing. Like getting my men out of this idea of, well, I used to lift this much, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you try, really trying to get them to kind of dial it back, focus on good form technique, try to get them to understand that maybe the reason why your shoulder hurts every time you bench is because you're doing it incorrectly. You know what I mean? So that was kind of the hardest thing for my female clients. The buy-in was like you said, they wanted to lose weight or they wanted to work on just one area of the body. I don't want to work my upper body. I don't want to get big, you know, these things. And what I will say is as much as it seems like the culture has changed, there's still a lot of us over a certain age where we still have that mentality. We still have those scars that we were, you know, left with when we were growing up where someone said something to us about looking big or um, girls don't lift weights or you don't need to be strong, like whatever it is. Like we all, we're still kind of stuck with that a little bit. It's hard to get that out of, out of your mind. So really just trying to get them to buy in and say, no, what you really need to do, what you're saying, what you want to have this like toned physique, really you need to build muscle and this is how we're going to do it. So it's just kind of sprinkling a little bit of, you know, sugar on the salt a little bit for them and not completely, you know, I don't ever want to I'll never say to a client, like, no, we're not doing that. Like, okay, great. Like you want to, you want to work on abs or glutes. Like I get it. I absolutely 100% get it, but we're going to do these other things too. Cause we have to look at you as the whole person and the whole body and what's healthiest for you is not just working abs and glutes every session, you know, same thing with the, the men. It's not just always chest day. Like we have to work our legs too, you know? So, I mean, that's the biggest. <laughs> oh man, it's true. It's true. I, you know, I see it kind of in, even in social media still, you know, where the guys are always like, yeah, you know, got to get, get, get the guns in the chest going and ladies, you know, we can, <laughs> oh goodness, we, we're funny. We're funny creatures. Do you find that still, like like you were saying, with the, the weightlifting side of things, do you find that women are still a little bit more hesitant to build muscle at, at a rate that, you know, would get enough mitochondria to kind of help the, the weight loss? I sometimes find there's a little conundrum in that department with folks. It's, it's definitely not... I don't notice it as much anymore, but then again, a lot of the clients that I'm training have been with me now for like four years mm -hmm. um, or longer. So they, they know what I'm going to say and, <laughs> and my beliefs and my philosophy and things like that. So we don't talk about those things as much, but what I do tend to get a lot is still kind of like having to pull clients out of this like negative self-doubt of, you know, I'll ask them, hey, that was great. We're going to go up. Oh, no, no, I, I, I can't. It's mm -hmm. like, no, you can. <laughs> like, I just watched you do that weight. You can definitely do 10 more pounds. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's always this 
you know, or even some of my clients, like I said, I have clients ranging from 35 years old to 72. And sometimes I'll hear from like a, my 72 year old client. She's like, well, I, I just, I can't do that. I'm old. And I'll have to say to her, you do realize that I have clients <laughs> that are almost half your age who you're pulling twice as much weight as they are. Like, this is not an age thing. You know what I mean? Like you're, you know, this woman is super strong and, you know, not to knock anyone, like everyone's, everyone's strength is different and everyone's in, on a different path. And, you know, everyone's journey is a, in a different place, but I am just like, don't use age as the excuse, you know? So uh, yes, yeah, that's, that's that's what I was hoping you're kind of going to say because or talk about because that is such a thing. I'll have a lot of patients of mine. I'll be like, you know, I really think that some strength training would be great for you. And they'll be like, I'm too old for that. And, and yeah. that, we get that stuck in our head like, oh, I shouldn't yep. be doing that. I'm too old. Like... And that's like I I try to tell people like, you know, especially another thing that's this is probably the hardest thing. I should be grateful in the sense that like all the clients that I work with love strength training, right? Or even if they don't love it, they know why they need to do it. Right. My next battle that I'm working with the clients is now trying to get people to get enough steps in daily yes. and doing things like zone two cardio. There, you know, the excuse now I'm hearing is, well, it's just too boring to sit on a bike for 30 minutes, you know, if it's not like a Peloton class or something like that, or, you know, don't you get bored doing the stair climber for 30 minutes? Like, this is another thing. Unfortunately, I think that I'm noticing is like, if you can't just for 30 minutes, walk on an incline on the treadmill and pop some headphones in and listen to a podcast our music, we have bigger problems here, you know? So, but trying to get people to get in that necessary cardiovascular movement, because I'm like, you think you're bored now? Wait 20, 30 years from now when you're really bored and you can't get out of your bedridden because you can't get out of bed, you know, like you have zero stamina to do anything. So, oh. That is a thing. And I'll, I have to agree with you. I think I've seen it shift as like social media and folks keep saying like cardio isn't, you know, the best. And then there was some other training, uh, not training research study about, you know, does it really matter how many steps you you take in a day? And I'm like, you know, gosh, I, the the people I see that are the the oldest and thriving are moving all day long. All day long. Yeah. Hey. All day long. I mean, we were meant to you know, we're meant to walk, we're meant to move, you know, so I don't know, I think it, it's hard. Like I said, you get once you can get people to kind of, you know, buy into one thing, then they think, well, that's it. I, I, I'm doing that. Okay, well, now we've got that part done. So now there's this other piece. And they're like, but I'm doing what you asked me to do. <laughs> like, well, yeah, it's, that's why I say I'm a coach for strength and longevity, because we're not just looking at the strength component of it. There is so much more. I'm, you know, I'm trying to work with my clients, like I said, like on the cardiovascular element of it. So a lot of my clients like took up pickleball, you know what I mean? And <laughs> these things, and they're like, you know, oh my God, I just, I'm so tired. Like, you know, I'm like, well, yes, we need to train, you know, do some cardiovascular, you know, biking or treadmill or, you know, stair climbing or something, work up that stamina and it'll help you with your pickleball. <laughs> or tennis or whatever it is you want to do. But, you know, um, yeah. And then nutrition, that's a whole nother beast because <laughs> then oh. people, you know, you try to explain to people, okay, now we've got this taken care of. 
now we got to work on our nutrition. Oh, and our sleep. And then, you know, it's just so, so overwhelming, I think, for a lot of people. So I try to just take it in small steps. <laughs> yep. I, I same thing. I experienced the same thing. I agree. It, it's taking little bites out. Okay. You've got that mastered now to the next, now to the yeah. next. Cause I, you know, as you've seen probably, and I mean, I know I've even done it to myself and I've tried to do everything at once, even to myself, like, okay, I'm going to do this new routine. I'm going to do everything. Yeah. It's, it's, it's too, it's too much. It's too much. Now, with the aspect of seeing folks for the last four years, I'm sure you've seen some changes over the time and different shifts as women are get older, but also as women are maybe doing more cardio, maybe they have more energy because that seems to be one of the main complaints I hear from a lot of folks. What have you seen in terms of improvement with strength training, with the cardio, nutrition, sleep, all the pillars that you're working on with folks? I have in particular like a couple of clients in mind. Um, like I said, or you said, I've been with clients uh, for like the last four years steadily. Yeah. And we've been through a lot of ups and downs. It's been challenging. Um, there's been, you know, families, you know, babies being born. <laughs> I've had clients battle cancer during this time. Um, we've had, I've had a client like lose a lot of weight and then struggle with gaining it back. And then now we're in a place where we're kind of like in that happy middle ground. That's a little bit more sustainable, obviously jobs, changing jobs. That's always a big one that tends to kind of spiral some people. Um, because I think, I think the overarching theme I've noticed with like most of my female clients is they know they need to do these things for themselves, but almost every single one of them, when it comes to training. And so that's something that we try to work on as far as just like, you know, making sure that scheduling is right for them. Just I always try to get my clients to focus on trying to knock this out first thing in their morning. You know, not everyone's day starts as early as mine, but <laughs> for most clients, I'm like, you have to try and do this first thing in the morning. We need to take care of you first before you can take care of anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've seen one of my favorite stories <laughs> is a client who lives in Minneapolis. She's 53 now. She came to me four years ago, right at the beginning of the pandemic, and she was already in excellent shape. She had done bar Pilates, like, you know, always been active her entire life. But it was funny when we were kind of like interviewing to work together, she, I said, well, you know, what is it that you want to focus on or learn or, you know, and she said, I really want to learn to deadlift. And I wasn't expecting that answer because I was expecting, you know, oh, I want to like build my glutes or, you know, and she said it like almost like as a question, she goes, I want to learn to deadlift, <laughs> you know, and I, so we started working together and, um, you know, three times a week, she had shoulder replacement surgery you know, two weeks after shoulder replacement surgery, she's in the gym with her arm in a sling, like, and, you know, we're, we're <laughs> draping, you know, we've got belt on her. She's doing squats with a belt around her waist. You know, she's got chains around her neck. Like the woman is just incredible. Right. So we got through shoulder replacement surgery. Then at 51, she tells me that they're going to have two more babies with a surrogate. Oh, so at 51, she has newborn babies, two of them. Oh my. And she said to me, she goes, after the babies were born and I went up to Minneapolis to, to visit her, she says to me, I didn't know how hard it was going to be. She already had two children that were grown, but she said, I didn't know how hard it was going to be 
having small children again. And thank God I'm strong now so that I can, you know, carry these two children around and be, you know, healthy enough to like run after them and everything. So then that was the second challenge we went through. And then in early spring of last year, she was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And I went, she said to me, she took a lot, she took a lot of time off to kind of deal with what was going to be going on with her treatment. And she came back to me and she said, I don't want to train three days a week. I want to train four days a week. And I said, oh, okay. She's and all throughout chemo, this woman trained with the exception of a few times, because there were times where she was very ill from the treatment. She trained four times a week. And I went to one of the chemo treatments with her and I had had a conversation with her dad. Her dad was there at the house and he said to me, he thanked me. He goes, thank you for, you know, working with her and making her strong so that she could beat this or go through this. And I said to him, I said, you know, I didn't know why she, when she came to me, you know, in 2020, I said, I didn't know why she was coming to me because she was already in such incredible shape. And I and now we were training hard. Like we were training really hard. She was deadlifting. She was safety bar squatting. I mean, this woman had never done any of this. Oh, wow. And I said to her dad, I said, I didn't know what we were training for, but now I do. We were training for her to battle this cancer. And that's what, that's what we were training for. So everyone trains for something different. And I think what's really important to understand is that, you know, we don't know what life is going to throw at us, right? If we live long enough, something is going to come up, right? So the healthier we can be, the stronger we can be, the more present we can be with our health right now only makes us more prepared for when those things happen. So that's kind of how I look at it now, you know, using her as an example. Um, we didn't know what we were training for. We we're like, why are we, why are we lifting all these heavy weights? Like, why are you putting on muscle like crazy? Like, <laughs> you know, we were just, you know, she was enjoying herself, learning something new and having fun. And the type of treatment of chemo that she was doing was one that really eats away at the muscle. And her doctors told her, they said, you are very fortunate to have the amount of lean muscle on you that you have, because you're going to need every ounce of it to fight, to go through this. Wow. Wow. So even to hear a doctor say that like was profound. Yes. So yeah. Uh. Wow. Gives me chills every time, even just like talking about it. Cause yeah, she's amazing. Yes. Oh my god. I mean, yeah, that's just one story. I have so like all my clients are very, they're all amazing in so many different ways and they're all battling their own things, you know? So our training sessions are, they're not just training sessions. It's, you know, therapy sessions. A lot of times, you know, someone just needs like 10 minutes to talk or get, get out of a mood or get out of their head or, you know, so we do that. That's the beauty of, of a a personal trainer and having someone that can be beside you through this stuff and work through hard stuff, right? Not only just life, but, but hard workouts. And that's the one thing I think about, you know, in, in the trainer and, and doctor and, you know, all of these things where we are working with folks one-on-one, we really get to share part of their life, but also be able to share space for them too. So cool. Yeah, it is. It's very rewarding. I agree. I agree. Now, you and I, of course, are working together 
And we're working on optimizing your health and working yep. on helping you to, to train and, you know, basically train for life. So tell us a little bit, to, or I guess tell the folks who are listening a little bit about what brought you to chat with me in the first place and, you know, and, and kind of talk about some of the changes you saw within your workouts and things of that nature so that maybe someone who's listening might get a sense of like, oh, this may be happening to me. Maybe I need to seek some help in this department. Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, one, I, I know of you cause you work with, you know, my partner, John, and I saw how you had helped him. He had, you know, his like GI issues, which you helped him with tremendously. And I remember it wasn't, I want to say like for myself, there wasn't one specific tipping point where I was like, oh, I, I need to, I need to figure this out. I think it was just an accumulation of things of just all kind of adding up to me not feeling like myself, if that makes any sense. I, um, as you know, <laughs> I was dealing with this kind of like numbing, tingling thing. I think that was probably the number one thing. I had been dealing with that since, gosh, September of 2021 was when I first started noticing it. And I started having like this numbness and tingling that was happening in my arms at night. So months and months <laughs> into a year of that happening and getting poor sleep kind of snowballed, I think a lot of other things that were happening. And then because of the lack of sleep, it was really just affecting my mood. And then that was affecting my desire to even train myself. So I would work all day with clients. I would have a break, you know, mid morning, sometimes in the always an hour, sometimes two hours. And I would find every excuse in the book not to train myself. But yet I'd go and then go work with someone and talk about the importance of why they should be training. <laughs> and this was happening a lot. And it, I started to realize that um, I, I don't think it, it wasn't burnout from anything that I was already doing. It was just a lack of desire in so many areas. Um, I was fatigued mentally, physically. Like I said, like some nights, I would think I was lucky if I was getting like three hours of sleep. This numbness was really, it was starting to seriously affect my life. Um, but then also, because when did I come to you? It was in the fall of 2022. Yes. yes. Yeah. I knew I wanted to start. I knew my body was going through changes, you know, mid 40s, you know, a little bit of, you know, always had weight fluctuation, but it was starting to become a bit more extreme. Um I was getting that, you know, elusive, like puffiness feeling. I was tired all the time. I just felt completely run down. Um, and then we started working together and you ran a bunch of tests on me. And I think the first things we started working on was addressing that I have very low iron. Yep. yep. Um and then a, a few other things, but I think the, one of the major tipping points was I had just started this new kind of like supplement protocol that you had put me on. And then I went to Qatar for work and I was there for two weeks and I had gotten sick or I was sick. What I thought was just like a sinus head cold before going to Qatar and I thought, oh, well, going there, desert, the heat, like it'll, you know, help dry this up, you know, I'll be fine. So I go there and just progressively over the two weeks got worse, mm -hmm. came back home around Christmas of 2022, and then it just kept getting worse. 
And then finally I went to the doctor and I had bacterial pneumonia. And this has now been like six weeks because I came back to the States and continued to just get worse for like four weeks. Um, yeah, it was terrible. So I, after that, after the, I got cleared up by the pneumonia, got back on the supplement regime that we were on. I decided at that point, once I was done with the pneumonia, I was like, that is the worst I've ever felt. Like it was the worst I had ever felt just walking up the stairs it felt like it felt like I had never exercised a day in my life. It just I knew I never wanted to feel like that again. So from that point on, it just it kickstarted this whole process for me about taking care of my health first. Um, <laughs> John, <laughs> John laughs because he like he opens up our cabinet and he's like, oh, my God, you cannot be taking all these supplements. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't necessarily take them all at the same time, but <laughs> I just, I, you know, after several months, I think of prioritizing working out first thing in the morning before taking on other clients and then, you know, working on getting my supplementation up, I felt amazing. I say around March of last year, March, 2023, coincidentally, I felt like my health was going up this way. <laughs> and then that's when I find out the news from my client that she was diagnosed with cancer. And I just was like, you know, I don't know. I didn't know what to think. I, I was feeling amazing at that time. And um, yeah, I just, it's something that I don't, I don't want to stop. I, you know, it, that kind of like sparked so many other things that sparked me, my interest in really wanting to dive into my nutrition, because I had always been the type of person who kind of just ate whatever I wanted, mm -hmm. which could have led to some of the deficiencies, <laughs> I guess, because <laughs> um, I wasn't really prioritizing eating the things I needed to eat, like, you know, leafy greens and things like that. Um, so it just once you once you felt bad and then you feel good again, it's just like getting, for me, it was just getting a second chance. Like I, I really wanted to just every single day feel my best. And that's what I want for my clients. Like, you know, it, it hurts me when I have clients say like, they're just not feeling good, you know, and they can't explain why. And I understand because I couldn't explain why I was still able to train, I, you know, physically, it's not like I was hurt. I was still physically able to train. I was just choosing not to because uh, I just don't feel like it, you know, and that wasn't normal. So, yeah. So yeah. huge, huge stuff going through something like that where you see someone not feeling well and you in, and yourself same thing it's like you know these things are are turning points let's put it that way where it's like man i am not going back there and i know when we first met you definitely were were dragging it was from you know just even me seeing you before that at a training and to when oh, we yeah. met i was like dang this girl we gotta we gotta boost her up <laughs> i think I think too, one of the things I, I notice is that for, for most women, we're just so used to just taking on so much, right? So it, I think a lot of times, and I've heard this too from clients, they're like, you know, they'll tell me, oh, I don't feel good. Oh, okay, well, go. Why don't you go and see your doctor? Why don't you go? Nah, it's not. It's not that bad. Uh, you know, I think a lot of women feel like unless it's something catastrophic, you know, it doesn't need to be addressed. And something as simple as you or I not feeling our absolute best, why think less than that? You know what I mean? Like, don't you deserve every single day? We, you know, 
I know I focus on trying to make sure that everyone else in my life is, has the food that they need, you know, is, has the sleep that they need, is feeling their best. Like, don't I deserve that too? You know? So I think that's the the thing is that for most women, especially if you're listening to this, just because you don't, you know, just because something catastrophic hasn't happened to you or you're not sick or something like that, if you're just not feeling good and you're not sure why, you deserve to check it out. You know, there's nothing wrong with seeking help and saying, you know, what can I do to feel my best? Hey, Hell Junkies, wanted to tell you about my pal, Dr. Anna Marie Frank's supplement line that specifically targets the needs of women. From anxiety to depression to getting focused and balancing those hormones, as well as helping with sleep, she's got you covered. Plus, she has teas too. This day and age, it's hard to know what supplement companies are up to when it comes to sourcing and quality. That's why I love to get to know company owners. Dr. Anna Marie has created formulas that combine what I would do if I owned a supplement and tea company. So wanted to tell you about them. As a listener of the Health Fix podcast, you can get 10% off your order by using the code D-R-J-K-R-A-U-S-E when you head to happywholeyou.com. Now, say you're driving or out on an adventure and you're not going to remember where to find this website. That's okay. My favorite products are all on my website at drjkrausnd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find everything I stand behind and use myself right there. So let's get back to the podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the way you began the talking you know today in the podcast about like I just wasn't feeling like me I think that's a very common statement that I hear and I think a lot of people can resonate with that and and then what you just said happens it's like um you know my arm isn't falling off I'm I can still push through yeah oh ladies hear us right now please yes now with with your training Obviously, you're working. You're you're working out of the dog pound. So I'd love for you to kind of tell folks a little bit about the dog pound. I would love for you to tell folks, you know, where you can be found, things of that nature. Because what I find unique about you is that you get women. You get us. You get how we work. You get how you know life changes, and of course, you know, strength and longevity for life. Thinking through that whole concept, I'm all in on that. So. I would love for you to talk a little bit about the dog pound. How did how did you end up connecting with those folks and and being? I think you're 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 a lead trainer there, right? You're you're part of the crew. Yeah, I well, I guess I should say I I was a okay. lead trainer when I was um, working in person. So I work all virtually now. Mm-hmm. And long story short, I had. I had moved around a lot over, you know, since 2015, I went from Los Angeles to Hong Kong, which is where I found fitness. Um, And then from Hong Kong to Copenhagen. So when I landed in New York, um, I had a completely different career. So I was a trainer now before I was a fashion designer. And I, someone I knew, surprisingly from Copenhagen, I remember right before I left said, oh, there's a gym in New York called the Dog Pound. And I had never heard of it because, you know, I wasn't in gym culture (laughs) when, when I left the U.S. So I looked at it and I was like, oh, it says it's personal training. Well, I don't need a personal trainer. So (laughs) I thought... (laughs) You know, I was looking at it. I was looking for places to train myself. You know right. what I mean? So I was like, well, why would I go there? I, I don't want a personal trainer. And uh, surprisingly enough, um, I ended up connecting through someone like through Instagram. And the manager reached out to me and said, hey, can you send me your resume? So I didn't have a resume, so I made one up and sent over and they called me in for an interview, you know, and that was that. I went in for the interview. They offered me the job and I think I started like a week later and yeah, so I was a lead trainer when I was working in, I worked at both locations, New York and LA um, in person. And then when the pandemic hit, we took everything 
online, but live virtual. So all the clients that I were training in person switched over to live virtual, just like this, you know, um, training and we legit train. We, it started out very small, maybe a couple dumbbells, a couple kettlebells, some bands. Most clients now have full gym set up, squat bars, cable machines, like you name it, they have it. So we do full on training for four week blocks. Clients train anywhere from most are two to three days a week. I have a couple that are five. Um, but yeah, I'd say on the average three days a week, um, people are training and uh, I was trying to get back to New York as much as I could, but I, I find the most value I have serves the clients virtually. It was actually a little hard to work in because their clients are all over. Some are on the West Coast, some are in the Midwest. I even have clients that live in Dubai. So clients oh. are all over. So when I would go to New York and work in person, I was still working virtual too. So I'd take a in-person client and then take a virtual client. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but just the switching back and forth between being in kind of like a loud gym where there's a lot of energy and music and people around to something a bit more intimate like this was a little hard for me to switch back and forth from. Uh -huh. So I just was like, well, it, if I go, I'd rather just work all in person a couple days, but then I don't want to disrupt my virtual client schedule. So it's just, it suits me so much better just to work virtually and I enjoy it. And I hope the clients do too. You know, so because to me, it's as it's I don't see a difference between personal training in person and what I do virtually. I'm not saying that there isn't a difference because I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people do value it differently. But to me, what I do with my clients is about is as personal as you can get, you know, they're literally in my ear. <laughs> I can hear every breath the client makes. I can hear them mumble under their breath that they're not happy that I gave them split squats. You know what I mean? Like it is as personal as it gets. We, you know, I'm in there with you. So, um, you know, I hear their spouses shouting from the other room. I hear kids in the background, dogs barking like it's you know, it's very intimate and personal. Um, but yeah, so I do all that through Dog Pound and I'm very blessed that they, you know, have allowed me to to work remotely and still be able to service clients this way. So that's how it came about. I love that you see it similar to me. It's like you just get into someone's life and and I feel like you can see behind them, right? You can see like, now I understand why there's a problem with this because I just saw, you know, like you, you see their stuff that they can't hide from you or they can hide from you when they show up at a gym, right? So it's like, I'm watching you guys. Um, <laughs> but but the truth is, is yeah, you get more into their life. And I, same with me. I At first, when I went from going in person and then into virtual, it was weird, right? It's like weird to figure it out. But I feel like there's such a more intimate connection you can get with folks like you're saying. Well, I think I think one misconception that I want to clear up because I hear this a lot too is people say, "Well, you can't really coach someone that way because you can't see everything." It's to me, <laughs> it's just like with any other sense, right? You know, if you you know if you couldn't smell what your taste would become stronger, right? You'd rely on other senses more. Yes, I'm not there physically. So there are a lot of things that I had to learn how to refine, which is verbal cueing. Mm -hmm. Sure, I can get up and I can demonstrate. And uh, I, I work in the gym next door or the gym from our house. So if I needed to go into the squat rack and show someone how to back squat, I could. But 
doesn't it serve me and serve the client better if I'm able to verbally communicate? You know, all right, you're going to put your hands on the bar here. I want you to step up, make sure that your feet are under your hips. You know what I mean? Like just being able to walk them through it so that they can visualize it themselves doing it. Because they're going to watch me do it. And then when they do it, they're like, well, how come when I do it, it doesn't look like when she did it. So I'd rather just be able to walk them through it verbally. So that was one thing was just getting better with my verbal cues. The other thing is, is just kind of knowing the space and your client. Like immediately when I train someone, I, especially if it's someone new for the first time, I'm like, okay, One, we are way too close. I need you to back me up. I want you to now turn the camera this way. I want you to do everything from a three-quarter angle on set one, set two. I'm going to have you completely go from the side. You know what I mean? Like it's, you just learn to do the different angles. We're not doing one set of something. I'm doing three, four, sometimes Mm -hmm. five sets of something. So I'm going to have you do it every time from a different angle so that I can see. And I'm going to catch something different every time. And by the way, we used to train in person. So I already know all the things that you do. (laughs) You know what I mean? So that helps too in a virtual sense is like, if I've already trained you in person, I already have that stored up here. So I know where to go off of. So it does, I do feel like sometimes I have to like stand up for you know, when I listen to other podcasts and stuff where they're like, oh, it's not real coaching or personal training. It is. Am I not, am I not still providing value to the client or that, you know, am I not still coaching them, getting them to reach their goals? If I am, then I absolutely am coaching them. It is coaching them. It doesn't matter if it's this, like if someone can coach you like this, why can I not coach you like this? You know, so. Well, I'm a wholeheartedly in on that because I, well, two things. Having worked in a really loud gym like Vigor and trying to work on foot, work with folks one-on-one with the loud music. I think there are things oh, yeah. that you can miss just because you're distracted. Someone drops oh. away, you know, something, someone's tapping you on the shoulder and like, yo, whatever. I think, I think there's beauty in in one-on-one internet based, you know, or, or, you know, zoom based, whatever you want to call it training, because you are not distracted. There's nobody bugging you at all. You are like laser beam on them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even (laughs) probably, like you said, more so I'm like laser focused. They're like, how did you see that? I'm like, because this is all I've got to look at. (laughs) I don't have anything else. So, yeah. I, I would prefer it. I mean, the older I get and the longer I've been in the coaching game and the, the doctoring game and the whole thing, I like the one-on-one. I don't like group. I like one-on-one. I like the person, like, I like the personal attention. And I think it does go a long way in terms of developing a relationship. And so I, yeah. I'm, I will defend you every single time someone tries <laughs> to say something like that, because I, I would, I would go one-to-one on the results too. And I bet you're getting a heck of a lot better results being able to laser focus. Yeah, thank you. And I and I hope so. And I think, um, you know, I want people to be a bit more open to it. I understand it's not it's not for everyone. I get it. Mm-hmm. You know, personally, would I probably train that way? No, but I can tell you it works in so many ways, like us, you know, like I get questions all the time. I tell people about you and how we work together and they're like, well, so how do you work with her? I'm like, (laughs) oh, we do our virtual, you know, health sessions. And they're like, wow, really? (laughs) Yes. Do you know how convenient that is? I don't have to go, you know, drive across town or anywhere else. Like, we're able to get all this done. You send the test to my house. I do the test. We send them in. You read me the results. Like it's so convenient. And I think that there's something to that convenience of, you know, removing all the challenges of the reasons of why you can't get to the gym, you know, 
You got to drive there. Or the commute, maybe it's 30 minutes away or whatever. Take all those factors out. Just do it from home. You know what I mean? You know, why not? It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And I'm really glad that we're able to do that. I mean, a lot of people diss the the pandemic for, you know, what it caused, but honestly, I think it opened our eyes to like a lot of new possibilities within convenience and, and things we can do. I always ask a question in terms of just something fun at the end of the podcast. And, and I had it listed out here in terms of, I have two for you, but I think they can roll into probably the same question. What is your favorite lift and what's your favorite workout? So I'll let you kind of differentiate what you want to say in those two, and we'll let you take it from here. Well, I think they're going to kind of be synonymous. So my favorite lift is bench pressing. <laughs> <laughs> and coincidentally, it's my worst. <laughs> okay. Meaning it's the one that I just cannot really get past. Like if my one rep max has never been like super big, I've never, I can't say I've ever had like a plate on each side. You know what I mean? Like that was kind of always the goal. I wanted to get 135. I think at my strongest, I was doing a training camp in Russia and we were doing I got to bench press with Mikel oh god I'm, I'm gonna butcher his last name but I'm not even gonna try but anyways <laughs> um he was a strong world's runner-up world's strongest man but he was also like an Olympic uh weightlifter as well for the Russia team but anyways he was working with us on bench press and I think I got close to 135 or 60 kilos. We we're in kilos. Um, yeah. I think it was 55 kilos is what I got. So I got almost there. It's not <laughs> my best lift, but I love it because to me, it just, it feels so empowering. There's something about, I love sitting down on the bench, you know, <laughs> I like getting my song queued up. Like, so, you know, I have a pretty good arch. So I like to arch, pull my shoulder blades back before I lay back onto the bench and get my hands on the bar and unrack it. And I just feel super powerful, even though I'm like, I've got like, you know, 20 on each side. <laughs> so. I love that. So I'll always do these interesting bench press setups. Like I'll throw bands on there or chains because I'm like, well, if I can't go super heavy, I might as well make it super fun. <laughs> so I don't know. I just, I love it. It's so fun to me. And like I said, I'm not overly strong at it, but to me, it's just, yeah, it's my favorite. And so because of that, I look forward to any upper body push day that we have um, because my upper body responds really well. And the crazy pump that I get from an upper body day, it's like, it. <laughs> this is going to sound so weird, but like if we're training at a commercial gym, like a lifetime or something like that, I remember we were at lifetime. I think it was in Scottsdale, Arizona. And we were at the lifetime and all the women we're doing like leg and booty workouts uh -huh. <laughs> and all the men were doing arms. And I was like, I'm supposed to deadlift today. Nah, I'm just, I'm going to do arms. So I go in there and like straight up grab my bench in front of all the guys. And I'm like doing my curls and all this stuff. And my veins are just popping, right? Like, I don't know what it is of my upper body. It just, it doesn't last. But during the workout, it's just like veins everywhere. My shoulders, like we're showing striations. I was doing my lateral raises. And I was trying so hard to flex on every man in the room. <laughs> Because uh, I was like, I was like, here I am just like, you know, 
bulging veins, like everything. And it was, it was hilarious. I don't know if they caught on to what I was trying to do, but I was definitely trying to flex. <laughs> oh, girl, I love so, that. Yes, upper body is my favorite. <laughs> Oh man, you and I need to work out together because that's so yeah. my jam. I love to like get up in there and yeah, just I mean, <laughs> flexing on the guys is my fave. Oh. I mean, with my with my fives, but you know, I was like, oh, I'm ripped. Look at me. <laughs> oh, I took it. So, I took yeah. it. Oh my goodness. Oh, Lala, so much fun stuff. I know we could probably talk for hours and hours. Oh, and yeah. I, I just love hearing your enthusiasm about working out, but also just for your clients and your love for your clients. It's so huge. And, and it's really, Thank special. You. it's really special to hear Thanks. that. So let's tell folks where they can find you on Instagram and wherever else that they can look you up. And if you are taking new clients, I'd love for you to share like how they can get in touch with you that way too. Sure. So you can find me. I think the easiest way would be through Instagram. Um, I'm at lift with Lala. That's L A F T with L A L A. Um, and that's probably the easiest place. Like if you're interested in training, um, reach out to me through Instagram. Um, like I said, I am working for Dog Pound, so you can also reach out to Dog Pound in New York and inquire about working with me. Um, I'm always open to taking new clients. Um, I do, I do kind of try to keep it small a little bit because, as we talked about, like what I do, I put a lot. I pour a lot into a client. So I get a lot of people who reach out to me and inquire about training and we'll talk and we'll meet. And it just doesn't, a lot of times I have to say no, because I'm not willing to compromise on my services or anything. Um, so I'd say if you wanted to, to work with me, um, you have to be willing to invest in yourself. Um, because that's what it's going to be. It's an investment. So, um, yeah. So I'm looking for people who want to invest. <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, it's yeah. an investment in you. It's an investment in your longevity. And, you know, that's, I mean, you can't put a price on that. That's priceless. Absolutely. That's right. Oh, Lala, thanks again for coming awesome. on and chatting with me and sharing your story yeah. and your favorite, your favorite workout. Cause now I'm like, yeah. that's it. we need videos Thank of us you. doing that. Right. Yes. And also anyone listening, if you're looking for an amazing functional doctor, hello, <laughs> she's right there. I, I can attest to that. So you've done a lot for me, Janine. So I want you to know that I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Right back at you. Hey, Health Junkies. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Fix podcast. To help support my mission to bring you tips, tricks, and tools to help you optimize your health, I'd be grateful if you'd like, subscribe, and write me a review for the podcast. And if you hear a product you're interested in on the podcast, you can now go over to my website to learn more. That's doctor spelled out, J-K-R-A-U-S-E, nd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find all the information on my favorite products that I stand behind and use myself. All affiliate income earned with your purchases goes directly to help support the production of the podcast so I can keep bringing you quality health information. I appreciate your support and I'm honored to have you listening to my podcast as a fellow health junkie. Thanks again.